Hi, this is Baron Hoffman. I'm going to show you how to hook up my controller to the throttle and the cycle analyst and talk a little bit about how to uh, mount it on your bicycle as well. So this is our standard uh, 12 MOSFET IRFB377 controller. Uh, it's rated for 30 amps maximum current and uh, 60 volt nominal battery, uh, 75 volts maximum. So you can use like a 16S uh, or lower voltage uh, lithium battery, uh, 48 volts uh, up to, uh, to 60 volt nominal uh, is appropriate uh, and uh, a good match with this controller. Uh, at a 60 volt, 60 amp uh, battery, uh, the max power for this controller is about 3600 watts. So here's our controller. It is a half twist controller. Uh, so half twist and then you would put a grip extension on uh, uh, of your own. Um, so it's a Hall Effect throttle and it has an integrated three speed switch. So this switch has three positions, low, medium, and high uh, that uh, govern the power that's outputted by the controller. Uh, and then it also has a power button here uh, it's currently in the off position, so if you press it in and it stays in, then the controller is then powered on, uh, and then releasing it uh, unpowers the controller. Uh, the throttle has three output plugs. Uh, the first plug, which has blue and gray wires going to a two-pin connector, that is your ignition. So you'll find the ignition lead on the controller, uh, this one has a label on it and the wire is yellow and red so you would plug that those two pins in it, it is uh, has a little uh, tab on it so that you can't plug it in backwards so that plugs into the ignition the second plug on the controller has a green brown and yellow wire to a three pin connector uh, the female side of a three pin connector this is the three speed switch function and so likewise on the controller, uh, you'll see a uh, connector that has low speed, over speed, and then uh, just a black wire in the middle. That is your three speed connector, which has the mating male three pin connector. And so you'd plug those two in, like so. And then the last port on the controller side is the throttle signal, uh, which has a red, black, and white wire with again a three pin connector, this time a male. And so you would find the matching three pin. This one's labeled with throttle. And from the controller side, it's green, black, and yellow. And again, you would plug those in. It is not possible to plug these in the wrong way, as long as you're not taking two pins from the controller and plugging them together. It's just one from the throttle to the controller. So that is the throttle hookup. The cycle analyst, this is a version 2.4 cycle analyst. And it has a six pin connector that goes to, there's actually a identical six pin connector from the controller uh, with one of the ports not populated. This is the hall sensor for this controller. So you can't plug those in because they're the same male connector. But if you find the female version, this says CA plug. So you would plug that into the controller. Okay. So right now my power is off. I have a, uh, in this case, just a power supply that's outputting about 50 volts uh, with an adapter. You would normally plug your battery into the XT90 port of your controller. I'm just going to plug in a power supply to essentially do the same thing. Okay, so display, the CA display is not turned on. That is because our power has not yet been turned on to the controller. So I'm going to turn the power on, and you'll see the display come on. Okay, so it's reading 49.8 volts, 0 watts, or negative 1 watt, whatever. It's going to be about 0 uh, since you don't have a, a motor hooked up. One thing that we need to do when we initially set up our cycle analyst is set the R shunt value. That is the shunt resistance that is inside the controller. And for the controllers I sell, I note the R shunt resistance. I actually test the exact R shunt resistance for each controller 
Uh, each one is maybe a couple of millivolts different. Um, so if you set the R shunt value of the cycle analyst to this value, uh, you should get very accurate uh, power readouts when you use the cycle analyst display. So this one was 1.23 milliohms. So we're going to set our cycle analyst uh, to match that. Uh, so to go into the programming mode of the cycle analyst, we're going to hold down the left button for a few seconds. Okay, so we're now into basic setup. Um, I can go through my basic set of parameters. Uh, you can also look up the user manual for the cycle, analy cycle analyst version 2.4 uh, to get uh, additional information. I'm going to skip ahead to the Arshant value here. So I'm just going to press the right button until we get to advanced. And I'm going to hold down the right button to enter the advanced setup. The first one is set range, and uh, low is fine, so we're going to leave that there. Set R shunt. This is where we're going to change the R shunt. Right now it reads 1.00 m ohm, milli ohms. So we're going to set that to 1.23. Okay, so I'm going to hold down the right button. Okay, the 1 is what I want, so I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to hold down the right button again. And I'm going to change this to a 2. So left is down, and right is up. So now it's at 2. So once I have the number I want, then I hold the right button again. Okay, and I move to the next digit, up to 3. Hold the right button. Okay, I'm going to leave that at 0, so hold the right button. Okay, so I go back. R shunt, set R shunt 1.23 million. So we're good there. Okay, 0 amps. Volt calibrate averaging, etc. Again, these are all settings that you can read about in the manual for the cycle analyst. But uh, the Arshant value I did want to point out specifically uh, because everybody will have to set theirs specific to their controller. And then you just click the right until you cycle through out of the programming mode. As for the rest of the connectors of the controller, I'll just uh, talk about those briefly. The heavy, thick wires that are yellow, blue, and green, these go to your motor phase wires. Uh, this controller has four millimeter HXT uh, connectors or banana plugs. They're the female side. Um, when uh, motors get sent out, oftentimes you'll have to solder on your own connectors. Uh, when I sell a kit or a controller, I'll usually include the male side so that you can uh, uh, wire or, or solder those onto your motor cables. Um, typically it's a good idea to add some additional uh, uh, shrink wrap or, or insulation to these so that they're not actually touching. Uh, if these were to touch uh, when your motor's running, uh, it could cause a problem or your motor would short out or stop and it'd be bad. So you definitely don't want these phase wires to touch electrically. Uh, between each other, so make sure you have good insulation around those when you connect to your motor. The other connectors, again, you have your hull sensor. This also goes to the motor, uh, and again, I sell or I include a mating female connector housing in pins. Uh, or if you purchase a motor uh, as a kit with this, the motor will have those already installed, uh, mating to this plug. The five pin connector. Okay, this is the programming header, and actually I think it is labeled here, program. Um, so you can program these controllers. Uh, we have some uh, Chinese version software that's not very good at the moment. Uh, I can program them here. Um, and soon we hope to have a, uh, an Android, uh, Bluetooth version of an Android app that will also serve as a programming function. Uh, but for now, um, it's not easily programmable by the user, um, but if you want a specific setting, like say you want to lower the current, maximum current, I can adjust that uh, in the event that your battery isn't powerful enough to provide 60 amps of current. Uh, the other buttons on here, you have an EBS negative. Okay, this is the e-brake. Um, I'll show you the e-brake connection here. All right, so we have a left and right set of e-brake connectors and you'll notice there's only one plug 
uh, for an e-brake connector. You can choose to only use one uh, brake lever, say your rear brake, if, uh, if your motor's on the rear. So you can set the rear brake um, to plug into the controller. And so whenever you press the rear, the right brake lever, it would kill the motor and, depending on how this is programmed, engage regenerative braking. Um, if you uh, purchase a direct drive hub motor from me, I usually send the controllers out so that they function with regenerative braking um, for a couple of reasons. One, because it does provide a good uh, braking force um, that I find very uh, comforting, especially when going down hills. Um, I enjoy having that extra braking force and not having to rely on the mechanical brakes to stop the bike. The other advantage of regenerative braking is that it does in fact recharge the battery a little bit. Um, not a huge amount. You might get over the course of a ride maybe 5 to 10 percent of energy back into the battery uh, as you're braking. But it is something, uh, but mainly I, I, I like regenerative braking for the, for the stopping force. Um, if you prefer, if you want to have either brake engage the motor brake, regenerative braking, you can actually just cut one of these connectors off and then parallel the red to the red and the blue to the blue wires. Just parallel them together to the one connector and then both, either one, uh, triggering the brake would, would engage the regenerative braking as well. If you opt for a Cycle Analyst version 3, what I oftentimes recommend is connecting one of the brake levers uh, controls to the Cycle Analyst and the other one directly to the controller. Um, that's a generally a, an easy way to do that. So that's why they come with two separate connectors for the optional uh, version 3.0 uh, display. The last connector here is the Cruise and it has a little jumper pin and I will usually include this with the kit um, but what the cruise does uh, it relies on a momentary switch uh, which is not included in the kit you'd have to provide your own switch but if you had that momentary switch a little push button of some sort uh, that, that you know as you're underway you know cruising you could press that momentary button and doing so would send a signal to the controller saying, okay, maintain this speed. Um, by having this jumper connected, uh, that automatically engages it, but you can uh, just take this, clip it, wire up your uh, momentary switch to it uh, if you want that function. Uh, I generally don't use that function. Um, mainly because I prefer to have uh, control via the throttle and not um, have the bike cruising on its own. So this controller, the measurements are 150 millimeters or just under six inches by about three and a quarter inches or about 82 millimeters. And the height is about an inch and five eighths or about 42 centimeter, millimeters. The mounting tabs, extend another half inch or so beyond uh, the housing. Uh, so with the tabs, it's close to seven inches overall length. All right, and again, to turn it off, you press the power button and the cycle analyst goes off as well. So just a couple of comments about mounting your controller to your bicycle here. So this is a full suspension uh, mountain bike frame. This is a Genesis V2100. And the triangle space is a bit small for a battery, um, so I use a different type of battery that I mount to the seat post. Um, and I mounted the controller here on the top side of the down tube. Uh, a lot of guys will mount it to the bottom of the down tube also, uh, which depending on your tire clearance uh, can be appropriate, usually closer down to the bottom. Uh, you can also, depending on clearances, mount it on your uh, seat tube there. And so this one, I have installed riv nuts at the exact points for the, uh, for the uh, mounting tabs. So that's probably the preferred method of installing if you don't have a riv nut tool. 
Uh, you can just use zip ties, uh, th those do work. Um, but, uh, but certainly uh, being able to bolt it to your frame is preferable. Here again, I have my battery connector, uh, which is an XT90 female housing male pin connector uh, that leads to the controller. There's my phase wires. You'll notice I do have them pretty well insulated. They cannot touch electrically, um, and so the motor is fairly well insulated. Uh, and again, you can see the right here. This is the hall hall sensor connector for the motor as well. Um, and then I've tidied up my bundle of wires here. Uh, there can be some excess wire on your kits, and usually I'll just kind of loop them uh, into a tidy bundle and zip tie them to the frame. Um, if you're doing custom builds, uh, occasionally I'll, I'll actually shorten the wire so that they're just long enough. Uh, but to, to, do, to do so, uh, you do have to be able to replace the connectors, um, which uh, does require some special tooling to do that. Um, and of course the mounting of the cycle analyst. Here you can see the three position uh, switch throttle uh, with the power button and the half twist uh, with my grip extension there. So that is the basic installation. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoy your new e-bike.